Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another tournament report. It's uh, It's been a while since I made one of these, for well, obvious reasons, but uh, tournaments have been starting up again uh, across the across the world, and uh, I was actually so eager to go, go to one so that I, for the first time in my life, crossed country borders to get our tournament. I went to NerdCon uh, in Copenhagen, Denmark. Um, so that was neat. Uh, I have uh, a Mick TikTok on the forums to thank for uh, alerting me of this tournament uh, and convincing me to go. Uh, he went there himself from Scotland, um, so we met up there and uh, had a had a good time. Um, we can have a look here at the venue that we were at. A uh, really good place, a sports hall. There were all kinds of games being played here: uh, 30k, 40k, hero clicks, I think. Uh, and a few others, and Ninth Age here in the middle, where the where the most important guys were in the middle. That's uh, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I also want to uh, give my thanks to Henry for hosting the event. It was really great, and um, the audience, you can uh, strap yourself in and uh, enjoy my uh, retelling of the five 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 great games that I played at this event. Game 1 against the Dreadelves. My opponent in this game is Fraz. Uh, some of you may know him. Um, by l l taking a peek at his dice off to the left of the picture, you can guess that he's an EDC player. And um, that made me a bit worried. Um, I've never, never played against a new Dreadelf book, so that's a problem for me. Uh, and I know that this is a very good player, uh, so it's an uphill battle for the, the first game, but um, let's dive into it. This was his list. Um, you can pause it if you want to have a better look, and we were playing Marching Columns and Spoils of War. We, uh, he, uh, I picked sides, so he opted to deploy first and try and get the first turn. So we went back and forth and he deployed a few um, light cavalry units on his uh, on my left flank and I countered with some units on my uh, right flank. And then he dropped the rest of his army ended up like this. So we have some shadow riders, warlock acolytes, more shadow riders on the flank, uh, temple militants, an obsidian guard with a ESP, the Milton 7 X Xarch, Xarch, something like that. Uh, auxiliaries behind the impassable and corsairs uh, with an outcast behind them. An altar uh, with the effigy of dread. Not that fear really matters that much in this game, but the bonus to uh, channel uh, turned out to be quite important. Um, a beast, master of Manticore, and then the Gorgons. Now countered like this, uh, with my scouts, the chariots and an architect, the archers with my hierarchs, the chapti and the necropolis uh, guard with uh, the pharaoh and their architect. And this is, uh, I won't be putting the labels on the next pictures, uh, I hope you can recognize uh, the units from now on, my own units um, at least. Um, we made a bit of a mistake uh, at the start. Um, he did drop to go first, but I only had three units left by that point, so he only got plus three on the dice. But we were, or at least I, I was so excited to, uh, to start that we um, forgot Vanguard. Um, so we rolled that and won it, and then we remem remembered, oh, Vanguard. And then he moved up his uh, um, Vanguards very aggressively, and then mo moved uh, again at me, at me in his first turn, which if he knew, wasn't sure that he was gonna get the first turn, maybe he would have done differently. But we talked a little bit out uh, after the game, and since he has feigned flight, uh, it, it wasn't really a risk for him anyway. So it would probably wouldn't have made a difference. But a bit annoying that I messed that up, being so excited to, to start, uh, and a bit uh, uh, sad that I didn't manage to steal that first turn from him. That would have been very nice. Maybe not made a difference in the end, but uh, very nice still. Um, 
As I said, he moved up aggressively with the Shadow Riders, like so. Uh, one in front of my Shapti and the other on the flank of my Corpus Guard. And then he pushed heavily on my left flank. And uh, in my turn I decided to charge the Shapti into the Shadow Riders, just to try and get rid of them. Uh, and they decided to flee, and half of them died to the Impossible Drain. And then I moved up, um, like so, trying to be able to counter charge uh, whatever charges the Shapti with the uh, Necropolis Guard. Um, with magic, I got a buff on the Necropolis Guard and a hex on the, um, the Temple Militants. A uh, bit of a misunderstanding there. More importantly, uh, I killed three of the Dark Riders with my uh, with an ice and fire and some shooting. Misunderstanding was that I thought that the Blades of Darag were limited at plus one strength, so I figured if I cast Deception of Strength on him, uh, that it only gives minus one EP, but then as soon as he casts another spell on them, which he probably will if he does go into combat, then my, I get the full effect of my um, ice, uh, Perception of Strength. But it's limited to plus two, so even if he cast one spell, um, he still gets uh, my, my perception of strength is practically, uh, practically negated still. So, a bit of a misunderstanding on my part, uh, unfortunately. In his turn, he decided to charge the Temple Militants into the flank of my Shapti and the Beastmaster into the front, and they succeeded both. Uh, not super lucky. Uh, they, they were about average charging, I think, both of them, so not too incredible. Um, and the Shadow Riders here actually failed their march test, so they were not able to march up in front of my Corpus Guard unit to shaft them, so they just moved up like, like so, and moved the other Shadow unit, uh, the, the other Shadow Rider unit rallied and moved up, up to shaft my, or just be in the way of my uh, Shariots, really. <coughs> Um, spells, he did get Spectral Blades on the Temple Militants, so with all the modifiers now they were up to strength um, 4, 3 base plus 2 from the spell, uh, from Blades of da Darag and minus 1 from percent of strength, so strength 4 and then uh, Ruthless Efficiency make it on 4 up with rerolls. Um, and he, yeah, he melted the unit, as we can see here. This is what he killed, and then the rest crumbled, and he overran like so. Um, that went a lot worse than we expected, expected, expected both of us actually, uh, because he did intend to shaft my, um, my unit, uh, my Necropolis Guard unit, but uh, as it turned out, he didn't, didn't need to, because he was able to overrun out of sight from them. I guess if he had charged, he could reform instead of running, but I don't know if you would have wanted to do that anyway. The only good thing here is that it didn't at, at least catch my archers, so I, I sh I'll be able to reform them and get out of sight from him. So in my turn I charged the scouts into the Dark Riders on my right flank, but three of them were killed to uh, stand and shoot, unfortunately. And then I... <coughs> Turned the archers around to get them out of sight, and the chariots turned to face the militants, and I opened fire, opened fire, and some spells to build the unit down a little bit. And I got some buffs on the chariots if they were to be charged. They were not, however. He continued to dance around, with the temple militants now facing the archers, and the manticore facing their flank, and the. Uh, um, Dark rider, Riders, Shadow Riders moved to redirect my Necropolis Guard yeah. <coughs> and the other unit, my Shariots, again, because the uh, scouts failed to kill, do anything to them. Um, in my turn, I charged the Shariots to kill the Shadow Riders, uh, but I left l let the uh, Necropolis Guard hold the ground. I didn't want to go through the dangerous drain test again in the, in the water feature. He did lose a bit to it uh, with his Temple Wiltons when he moved through it, but not that much actually. Uh, I moved out my 
<coughs> my wizards uh, out of the unit um, and open fire again at the temple militants, whittling them down a little bit further. You can see here. And I kill the Shadow Riders and reformed out of sight of his Manticore. <coughs> uh, in his turn, he charged the Temple Militants into the Archers and the, mid uh, the Gorgons into my Chariots. Um, and then he moved the Manticore away a bit to get a good view of my uh, Hierophant to be able to kill him in next turn. Magic. I saved all of my dice to make sure we could dispel uh, the Glory of Gold uh, on the Gorgons, but I had five dice, I think, and then maybe he had four or five dice to cast it, uh, and I failed to dispel it. Uh, so we got a lot of spells through, and the most important one, because Glory of Gold, um, it negates my six-up armor that I would have had otherwise, it negates my five-up fortitude, and it gives them reroll to wound. So, negating my uh, resilience 5. So, yeah, very, very good spell to cast on the Gorgons in this situation. And um, it showed in the numbers. Uh, after Unstable and everything, uh, this is what I had, le had left of the unit. One Chariot with one health point and the Architect. Just from three Gorgons. And I don't think you rolled like exceptionally another well. And I killed a few in return. In, and he killed the uh, archers as well with the militants, but there's only two left and the uh, character, uh, Alchemy Wizard. Um, on the left flank he kept moving about a bit um, to get a good charge. And in his turn, uh, or in my turn rather, I cast the unit in divergence to try and save this unit. I recovered one health point. Uh, but he killed the last chariot anyway. And then in his turn, he charged the temple militants into the flank of the chariot, the, the architect, and the um, manticore into the hierophant. Um, killed both. No problem at all. And on the left flank, he charged simultaneously the obsidian guard and the warlock acolytes into my. Necropolis guard, and he did get two buff spells on the Acolytes, bring their strength up to ins insanity, and they just melted my Necropolis guard. Um, only, and yeah, he just tore, tore through my army, basically. Uh, some turn earlier he had, oh yeah, the, 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 I think he's picked up the objective with the, uh, one of the objectives with the obsidian guard, but the auxiliary is grabbing one at the end as well. So, he won the, the second secondary objective as well. So, not a great start. Uh, the math ended up like this. I only got 677 points. Uh, I killed Shadow Riders and half of the militant unit. He killed every th single thing I had um, and got the secondary objective. So, it was a zero point for me. Uh, not not great, <laughs> but it was a rough matchup. Um, the plus one to wound is not kind to an army that pays very much for the extra resilience. Um, and a great player, and I didn't really know what I was fa facing as it turned out. So, uh, not great, but uh, it can only b go better in ga game two, right? So, um, let's move on to that. Game two was against the Empire of Sonstal. A guy named Felix was commanding it, um, and uh, let's have a look at his list. And this is the actual list that he had sent into the tur tournament. Uh, he got a lot of penalty points for it. I think I think it's very simplistically ri written, um, and I've t even, even tidied it up a little bit. But um, yeah, this is what he had. You can pause it, pause it, if you want to look through it. Also, just a side note, uh, the first guy I played was Scottish, the second guy here is uh, Swedish, so I get to play a Danish guy. Uh, the scenario was hold the ground, secondary objective, and deployment was marching columns again. Uh, so this is how I deployed my army. I opted to go first. Uh, I'm not really sure if there was any interesting back and forth. Uh, probably not. Uh, he had a lot of, lot of shaft, shaft, I don't. So. Um, once I 
started deploying, he pretty much knew where I was gonna go, uh, and then I I had dropped when I got the chance to go first. Uh, hindsight, not the best idea. Um, we're playing hold the ground and going second in that uh, secondary objective is pretty good. And also, his range is mostly 24 inches on shooting, pretty much everything actually. Um, so if I had opted to go second, he wouldn't have been able to shoot me that much anyway in his first turn. But uh, this is how he deployed. Um, so on, on my far right flank, we have the uh, Haitas and more of them with a wizard and a prelate and another unit of Haitas. Then some light infantry and a mortar, heavy infantry, more light infantry, um, an arcane engine with the distracting upgrade, the, the Imper Imperial Guard block with the BSB and the prelate, another mortar, two oligons, and another unit of heavy infantry. So, big nice <laughs> line of bodies, pretty much. So, I went first, as I said, and I charged my scouts into his uh, writers that had uh, vanguarded. And then I used magic, ice and fire to kill uh, two or three from the other unit um, next to the house. And they panicked and um, fled through the house, killing one more. Uh, so that was looking pretty good. Uh, moved up pretty aggressively with the Shapti, although knowing that they were gonna take some hurt, but it was gonna happen sooner or later, I guess. And I did take the first turn, so I should make use of it, I guess. Well, again, probably not, not a good idea to take the first turn. The combat actually was a push. I did put my um, fortitude on this guy, these guys, um, but I didn't. I did, you can reach them with buffs and they didn't do anything and didn't take any damage back either, so whatever. Uh, the turn after, I did kill one of his, but he did kill mine, two of mine. Um, wonder how that works out, but whatever. Uh, and then I charged his flank. Uh, let's focus in on his flank now. So I charged um, my chariots into the flank of um, the unit. Uh, to just obliterate it. And I did cast Perception of Strength on this unit in this turn, uh, anticipating a counter charge from the bigger unit. And it came, as I predicted, and he managed to cast some buff spell, I think. Um, he focused on this part of the, get the table. Um, I dispelled uh, the Flaming Swords and the other flame, but I think he got the reels to wound through. Um, or the Aegis save. Probably the Aegis save. Um, so, he didn't have much, uh, even though it's a wizard, wizard master of Pyromancy, it's Pyromancy, so he didn't have much of buff spells. Uh, only the, pre the prelate had the, the majority of the, uh, those, and those were pretty easy to dispel. Uh, and that combat uh, was a massacre. I killed one chariot, I killed a lot of his, and he broke and ran, and I reformed to uh, Base. The rest of the board, this is a while later. Yeah. Um, I re reformed the face the rest of the board, and, and in my turn, I uh, chased the uh, big writer unit off with my scouts. And I tried to charge with the chariots, but they failed. So, uh, and, and then I was actually redirected. We can go back and look uh, here. Uh, he actually managed to rally that single writer. So he later moved up to redirect me, so that took a turn to get rid of, and then I turned to face the battle again, and then he moved up the uh, Light Infantry you can see in the picture, and I had to get rid of those, and reform to face the battle again, and then I was able to get back into the game. Into the game. But it, this was, it just took a while, so we have a lot of other things to go through on the battlefield before that. So let's go back to this picture, uh, before I charged. and. Let's look at the shooting he did on me. Uh, he didn't move much in, uh, in his turn, uh, but he did unload on the Shapti and killed more than half of the unit, so that was painful. Uh, I moved up a little bit um, and then decided to, to try a long charge with the Shapti. He needed another 9 on the dice, I think, into uh, one, one of the Volleguns. And I managed. I got it. Um, 
so that was nice. I unfortunately I chose the the wrong <laughs> one again. I should have picked the the one to the right. They, they were equal distance, which is yes, super stupid. Um, that way I could have killed both of them. Uh, but I did kill. Uh, also, this charge is not correct. We adjusted it later when we re realized I, had, I actually had to maximize. Uh, I had forgotten about those rules. Um, but I could have chosen overrun into the heavy infantry, but I chose not to because they would just kill four of my guys. I figured. Um, I kind of under uh, underestimate my shot list, I think. Um, but I didn't do that, and instead I decided to take the charge from him instead. Um, but yeah, this is after the combat, um, and I, I chose to reform that uh, so that I was out of sight of the Imper Imperial Guard and take the charge from the Heavy Infantry, but he didn't uh, charge me, he instead sh sh shot at me again, uh, reducing me even further, and I, I wasn't able to charge anything, so I moved up, uh, wheeled about to face the War Machines again, but then he shot me to, to bits and killed the unit. So the Chaplis were out of the game pretty early. So, uh, should I actually put in an extra, extra picture here? Um, the same turn that he charged the. or the, the turn after he charged the. Um, uh, chariots with his uh, Haitas, in that unit he also moved up. In, that, in the same turn he did a charge, he moved up the uh, Imperial Guard and the. The infantry here to be within six inches of the objective, so we started contesting it because I, I had my bunker within range as well. Um, and I, in my turn, I decided to charge the Imperial Guard because he didn't have any spells on it, and I did. It was still distracting though, uh, and I actually failed to get a single spell through on my unit. I, I rolled so low on my casting attempts that turn. Um, so, not a single spell for me, but Still, uh, I, I had the upper hand and I killed a bunch of him, he killed a bunch of mine, and then I reformed to make sure that I had the Heavy Infantry unit in my front as well. The Heavy Infantry unit, which had been targeted by a, um, I think, a, a unit in Divergence by this point, so they are uh, quite heavily reduced their power. Yeah, th th that was what happened with the Magic Phase. I failed to cast so many of my buff spells that I didn't have anything left to cast. Um, in, in buff spells, so I, I cast unit in, in divergence instead. Uh, so that was a bit rough. Um, and here we can see the big picture. Um, so in this, in the turn that I charged um, the, Imperial uh, in the Imperial Guard unit, I also charged with the chariots into the heavy infantry, but I needed like an 11, so then I failed that. So th then I was able to redirect with the uh, lone. Either. But the combat here in the center, it turned into a long one. Um, he countercharged, you can see here a bit of an old picture, but he countercharged with the heavy infantry and the Arcan engine. Um, and they kept moving up the, uh, the heavy infantry unit, and we just kept grinding. In my second um, magic phase, I also didn't get any spells through. Again, just horrible di dice roll, uh, trying three dice to get a seven, um, or even a six, and it, it just didn't work. Um, so, no magic support, but the grind was on, and I kept grinding away at his uh, Imperial Guard unit. Um, eventually I did get some spells through, and in when that happened, uh, it, it swung a lot, and I killed a bunch of his Imperial Guard. Um, so yes, see here. Here I've gotten two back because uh, I lost. Uh, uh, I only had the front rank left, but then I managed to race back a few wounds. Kept ra kept grinding, kept grinding, kept grinding. As you can see, I have two spells here: Ancestral Aid and Perception of Strength. Although that, uh, he he kept causing causing Perception of Strength on me, uh, because even though I had killed his wizards, he still had the distracting wagon and a prelate, so he only had bounce spells, but he got so much more out of his magic phase than I ever got of mine uh, for uh, at least two turns there. Uh, so that was, that was frustrating, uh, but the grind was up, it continued and it continued. I killed his BSB with my Pharaoh, um, and then started hammering on that distracting wagon. Uh, he then eventually charged 
uh, with the heavy infantry into my flank. It was looking rough, but by now the Imperial Guard unit was gone, and I had like four guys left in the unit, something like that, um, at the end of the, that combat round. And then I was able to counter charge and I put. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, no. This is after that combat round. Um, there were some reforms, and, and then it was my turn, and I charged. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is after that combat. I charged the uh, archers into the flank of the uh, big uh, heavy infantry unit, and the shards into the flank of the other infantry uh, heavy infantry unit, and just obliterated everything. He broke, and I ran most stuff down. And by now, I also managed to claim the objective uh, because when the heavy inf uh, the imperial guard died, I had two scoring units within uh, six inches, and never was able to uh, come back from that. So in the end, I had killed. I think I even got to kill the, that uh, uh, light infantry unit up in the uh, in the top, uh, but the, the two mortars and one volleygun survived. Uh, so yeah, this is the last picture. Um, so I, I killed pretty much everything of his, um, and got three thousand eight hundred seventy-three points. He had killed uh, eleven hundred seventy of mine, so one by two. 2703, and we got to this scenario, so 13-7 to me. Uh, so, looking up, uh, the second game did go a lot better than the first, that was for sure. Um, yeah, that's it for game two. Game three against the Highborn Elves, commanded by Pete, and uh, quite an interesting list. Uh, as you can pause it here and have a look, uh, we were playing Frontline Clash and Secure Target. Uh, this is how I deployed. Um, we went back and forth a little bit. I was sort of hoping he would go first, but... Or maybe I deployed everything. I did deploy uh, in the end to, to go first. Um, that's for sure. And this is how he deployed. Uh, he had Rymanites, a uh, unit of Seaguard with uh, the Sliver Lord and a Mage, two Eagles and a Fire Phoenix, uh, a Mage, a Pyromancy Mage on Dragon, another unit of Seaguard, a small unit, uh, two Reapers and a unit of Reavers. So quite an unusual hybrid list and um, uh, quite fun to play against really. Uh, it turned out to be a really interesting game this one. So he moved up with his Reavers with Vanguard, and as usual, I charged first turn uh, with my scouts into him, uh, put the fortitude on them, and then try to get some spells on them. Uh, so here we can see the charge. I moved up, up with the rest of the army. We really had quite a diagonal deployment, um, so my shapties were quite far away, so that we just you know, move as fast as they could to get uh, back into the game. Uh, spells, I cast Ancestral Aid on the um, scouts and raised a model back as well. And I cast Perception of Strength on him to make him wound on sixes. And it worked, I killed, or no, I, I broke the unit and ran him down. Uh, ended up in front of his army. Uh, he tried to burn me with the Fire Phoenix, um, but didn't do much of anything. And then moved up his army pretty much around my scouts, um, aiming to shoot them down in his shooting phase, uh, and with pyromancy and all of that. Uh, and he did, no problem at all. So we traded uh, our little uh, light cavalry unit uh, early on, but I'm pretty happy with that. I think his is more dangerous to my army than mine are to his. Uh, my turn two, I charge with the chariots into his uh, reaper up on the hill. He, he's killed one of my chariots already with the shooting from the reapers. So I'm having some retribution. They make it in and kill it and go run into the eagle above, as you can see. Um, yes, this is. Oh, yeah, and I charged. Uh, <laughs> um, I also charged the uh, Necropolis Guard into the Fire Phoenix and he decided to flee. So that's what we see here. The, uh, that Fire Phoenix has fled as, uh, as well. Uh, and I moved up the Shaptis and the um, 
and the archers. Uh, by the way, secure target, this one marker in the lake here and the other behind the chapters. So I certainly had the advantage of the de deployment. I, I, we uh, both markers ended up in, on, on sort of one on the right side table half. Uh, so I deployed heavily on that side to get him and he deployed uh, on, heavily on the left side to stay away from me basically. So I had good opportunity to take the, the secondary objective for sure. Um, in his turn, uh, he declared a charge with the dragon into the chariots, but I had anticipated this and caused um, truth of time on him, uh, hoping to uh, dissuade him from even trying, uh, but he did try. He needed to roll a 7, and he rolls 5 dice, removes the two highest and the lowest, and this is what he rolled. Uh, so he did roll a six and he failed, so only stumbled for forward four inches instead. Uh, as we can see there. there. Uh, he rallied the Fire Phoenix and then reformed um, the um, big unit of Seaguard into ranks to face my chariots. Uh, and the Rhymanites are pushing up to threaten my bunker. He moved a, an eagle in front of my Necropis Guard. Uh, and he moved the uh, other reaper actually to try and get more in the way of my chariots, but uh, I don't think that made a big difference really. Um, and he cast some fire spells on the Shaptis, didn't do too much damage. And uh, this is after the combat um, where I've killed the eagle there. And I had some tricky decisions to make here. Uh, this is maybe the pivotal moment of the game. Um, I could reform after the combat, or, or pivot, post-combat pivot, because my unit is perfectly square. Uh, I can't really angle myself that much because I'm almost flush to the board edge. Okay, but I could face back into this uh, uh, main area of the board and charge the small unit of uh, Seaguard. But that doesn't really give me that much. Uh, his dragon would then come in and destroy me together with the big unit of um, Seaguard. Uh, what I opted to do instead was charge the Coast Guard Reaper and um, overrun off the table. To, um, mostly to preoccupy him for a while, uh, because then th that means he has to prepare for my arrival back. I also had the opportunity to, sh to charge the Shaptis into the um, small unit of... Um, Seaguard, but uh, I needed a 9 on dice, so it didn't really feel like a good option. Uh, we actually tried it and it would have succeeded, and that would have been a great thing for the battle, uh, but uh, uh, in the end, I opted not to do that. So, this is what it lo looked like after movement. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I did declare another charge though. <laughs> the, uh, the architect in the uh, Necropolis Guard unit charged out of it into the Eagle. Uh, just to try and lock it up and hopefully event eventually dest destroy it. But it, it was a way to, for me to get rid of the eagle without uh, sacrificing the unit. Because another thing I did here in the moment is I moved up the Shaptis as much as I could and I abandoned the bunker for the Necropolis Guard unit uh, because the Rhymanites were starting to threaten me quite a bit. Um, so here we are. Measuring some distances, uh, and you can see the um, uh, chariots have been, by now overran off the table. This is where they will show up, they're not on the table yet, um, but uh, they, they will end up in that position pretty soon. So he moved uh, like this, placed the Fire Phoenix, they didn't charge anything, he placed the Fire Phoenix um, in next to my chariots to try and further stop me from going in that direction. The small unit of Seaguard moved up into the face of my Shaptis. I made a mistake and allowed the dragon to just slip through my lines and face... Um, and chose to do that and face the Necropis Guard. Uh, and the uh, big unit of, of uh, Seaguard reformed into, a, uh, into line formation again to shoot more. Uh, the combat with the eagle. Um, this one uh, turned out to be a pr pretty prolonged one. Uh, we just uh, 
fluff their attacks uh, over and over. Oh, or I guess he didn't fluff it, I have two up armor, so he's not gonna do much to me anyway. But I, I fluffed my two attacks. Um, and here we can see the uh, sea guard with her pretty little shields moving out to my shaptis. Uh, he actually had uh, made custom transfers for all of his shields, uh, which was pretty cool, and different transfers for all of the units. So I like that det detail of his army. Um, yeah, uh, is this uh, is there anything different here? I don't think so. He's moved the. Uh, no, I think it's just the same picture. Um, <clears throat> I decided uh, to uh, back away with. The, I charged the, the Shaptis into the um, uh, unit in front of them. The Chariots entered the board and, and reformed and backed away, uh, thinking that maybe I could get a good combo charge on the uh, Coast Guards. Or sea, guard re uh, sea Guards. Um, I was cr quite afraid of that Sliver uh, Lord. He could. Like with a good roll, he could win combat quite big and, and just crumble my units. So I, I really wanted to get a combo charge on the unit to be sure that I could get it. And um, my wizards abandoned the uh, Necroguard unit, moved back into the archers, who before that reformed to uh, be outside out of sight from the dragon, and I faced the Necroguard to. Uh, take on the charge from the Rymanites, who had lost a few numbers from uh, a, a few spells and uh, um, the Inner Strain test by now. Uh, I finally killed, or I broke the Eagle in combat and ran it down, and <laughs> rolled a double six for overrun. Uh, and uh, yeah, so she has front crawled through that lake and got up on the other side and sh shook it off and killed that, killed that Eagle. No problem at all. Um, here's the final finished movement. Uh, the Shaptis broke the small unit of Seaguard and they uh, fled, but I didn't c catch them. But they did give me this position, <laughs> which, which was pretty good because now he can't charge me. But as it turned out, I couldn't really charge him anyway the turn uh, after. Uh, so this is what it looks like going into his turn. And he shot the dragon and the rhyme knights into my uh, necropolis guard, and I had perceptual strength on the unit, so that was nice. Uh, he didn't rally the small unit sea guard, uh, so they ran through. And then we go to the, this neat little, little combat here. Uh, here again, you can see the shields, uh, and I killed a lot of knights. Um, you can see they <laughs> place the corp corpses up top of the picture. Um, only the Stanover remained. I, th I think he still won combat by just a, uh, a little bit, um, but uh, still it was going pretty well for me. I have lost a few models though, so not perfect, but um, and this is. What, what it looks like going into my turn then, uh, and I, I couldn't actually get a good charge on the big unit of uh, Seaguard. Um, it's not really visible from this picture, um, but I think we concluded that I couldn't get both units in, in any good way at least, uh, because of how they were posi they, they were positioned and, and, and such. And as I said, I didn't want to short just one unit, that, that felt like it could go really, really bad, uh, because of the Sliver Lord. Um, spells, I cost... Um, I, I cost more buff spells into, into the combat and kept grinding, but he, he did fairly well. Um, this is after just one more round of combat, I guess, and he's killed a lot of dudes. Um, but now my pharaoh is in base contact with his dragon. Uh, so we go into his turn. He was also afraid of my shaptis, uh, so he didn't charge them. Uh, I guess because if he did, then he would kill a few and then my chariots would charge him and, and by that point I could probably destroy the unit. Um, so we're both a bit hesitant. 
as it turned out. The Fire Phoenix charged the archers, who are now in a bit of a pickle. Um, and here we have the important combat. And uh, I think we entered a duel, uh, actually, with the uh, uh, Pharaoh and the Dragon Mage. And I just managed to, to scrape by and kill the dragon with my Pharaoh. Uh, so I won that, won that combat and, and got the got the general. So that was very very lucky. Uh, no, I guess we didn't do a duel because he, he, here we just killed a bunch other, of other models. So I only have two models left uh, at the end of that. Uh, but the dragon is down for the count. Um, I was pretty lucky during this combat because I didn't didn't get a lot of spells through. Um, I think most of the time at least got one, so you got the default bonus from um, the, the, the uh, mage upgrade. But uh, uh, I made sure to dispel the uh, flaming swords at least, and I think maybe one time I got the stars aligned, but not that often. Um, so it was going pretty well. Uh, the archer combat didn't go that well though, here you can see it's started to crumble. And this is near the end of the game. Um, I think this is this must be his turn. Um, yeah, th this is his last turn. In my last turn, I did have the option to turn my uh, Necroguard around and shot the, the Phoenix to try and save my Hierophant and the Archers. Although that would come with the risk of him killing the the uh, Necropolis Guard. Um, but the, the, the Pharaoh would, would tear through the through the Phoenix like butter at least. But instead I opted to go for the objective. Um, this way I have both the Shaptis and the uh, Necropolis Guard in range. And he could not get, get within range himself, so it turned out a bit, a bit excessive. But my thinking was that if he somehow, ma somehow managed to break the Shaptis in a single turn, then I would still draw the objective. Um, but as it turned out, he killed one model um, and uh, oh, a few more wounds and I killed a few back, but it didn't really matter in the, in the end. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much how the game ended. Uh, quite a lot of dead. He, he did, did, did kill the bunker and the, and the um, uh, both, both wizards with the phoenix. So quite a lot of, a lot of dead stuff. Um, adding it up, I got 2603 points. He got 1482, so a difference of 1121, and I got objective, so 164 to me. So another win, uh, going pretty well. And also, this is the end of the f first day, and uh, Pete was actually an American who had been living in Denmark for a few years. So so far, I had not not yet played against a, D a Danish person. Uh, so that was pretty odd, uh, going to a Danish tournament. But uh, that's about to change, going into Game 4. Game 4 against the Orcs and Goblins, commanded by a guy named Sophus. Um, feeling pretty good going into this game. I uh, had two uh, uh, victories in my back and um, I knew I know Orcs and Goblins pretty well. Uh, or really, rather well, really. Uh, so, felt pretty good. Um, this was his list. Pause it if you want to have a look. We were playing Frontline Clash and Hold the Ground. Uh, I dropped to go first. Uh, we went back and forth, forth a little bit, I think, even though it was uh, Frontline Clash. Um, but he, he didn't take the bait, so to speak. I, I, I didn't really want to go first, but since I had, had the opportunity, I might as well. I didn't want to drop to go second, at least. Or maybe no. That's what I did. <laughs> I'm lying. I did drop to go second. I did choose to do that because in, I had learned in Holy Ground that is good. Uh, so I dropped to go second. This is how he deployed um, the Gargantula, uh, the Cave Goblins on the my, on my left flank, uh, the Boar Riders and the Gate Launcher behind, a Warlord on Wyvern, the Omen of the Apocalypse, so he's a pretty scary dude, the Trolls, um, the Forest Goblins with a Shaman. Um, the Orc Shaman, and 
yeah, it was after deployment that uh, we, we uh, I pointed out to him that he can't join that uh, orc to an insignific insignificant unit, so he started running around on his own after that. Uh, two scrap wagons in front of that, in, of that a boar shot, another gate launcher, and, and a goblin king on wolf uh, far on the right flank, not shown in the picture. Um, so this is how it looked after Vanguard and some slight movement of his, um, but we'll not talk about talk about that. He took his first first turn and started by failing the stupidity test on the trolls. So they um, rolled over and into the waters. Uh, guess they were thirsty. And then he uh, moved uh, both of the uh, scrap wagons moved up quite aggressively. Uh, unfortunately for him, and then the rest of the ar army shuffled about a bit, mostly forward. Now you can see the shaman on his own. And on my right flank, the Goblin King with the vanguard move and his 18 inch movement, he made it up into the flank of my chariots, uh, threatening my bunker. Uh, sort of, not quite yet, but if I move too much with the chariots, he would. Uh, he also used shooting to, to and some magic, I think, his swarm of insects to. Uh, hurt my Shaptis and cast Break the Spirit on them so that they can't march or charge. But it wanted to charge, I guess. Uh, in my turn, uh, I forgot to take some pictures here, here but I charge, charge with the scouts into one of the scrap wagons and the uh, Necropolis Guard into the other. I was a bit torn on what to do here, um, mainly because of the Goblin King. I didn't really know how to handle that. Uh, but I decided to. Uh, block him with my chariots. Uh, this is after movements. I, I move my chariots forward, but um, still making sure that he can't charge my bunker. And I'm planning to eventually move the wizards into the Necropolis Guard unit to keep them safe. Um, but for now, the, the, the chariots are just a mobile wall, more or less. And the chapter is moved up to the hill to uh, um, get a better charging position. And I cast Truth of Time on them to further uh, that goal. He countercharged the trolls into the scouts um, and then moved up aggressively towards my Shaptis um, within 8 inches with, with the cave goblins, even closer than that, to launch the, the Madgits. Um, he caused Break the Spirit on my um, Necropolis Guard unit me from charging, uh, and the uh, Goblin King moved around like this, um, ignoring my w wall. Um, the Madgits did a bunch of damage, and then he used sh shooting to do some more. Um, so there was that. Uh, the trolls actually didn't kill <laughs> my unit uh, after Crumble. I had one left, which was a bit unlucky for me because. If they had killed him, I would have had an opening. Uh, can go to the next picture. Yeah, uh, th this is after my movement. Um, but if he had he had killed that um, uh, last scout model, my Shaptis would have been able to charge the trolls and sort of dodge that pickle they were in um, and move up to the center of the battlefield more. Um, but since he survived, they couldn't do that. Um, because I, I had to wheel past the Cave Goblin unit uh, so much that I would miss the. I wouldn't be able to make it to contact with the trolls with the scout where he was. So I instead reformed them to, to face the threat, basically. And I did as I said, I moved the wizards out of the bunker and into the uh, Necropolis Guard unit, and the Chariots were now free to advance, and they didn't really fear the charge of a single Orc Chariot, so they just moved up in front of him. And uh, then Magic, I cast um, Unity in Diversions, and uh, the uh, Forest Goblins did diverge, uh, more than half of the unit destroyed, um, so that was nice, uh, and they panicked and, and fled but stayed on the board. Um, so this is what it looked like at the end of my movement and 
shooting and magic and everything, and then combat, he killed the scout, pretty much. That's all that happened. And in his turn, he declared his uh, war cry and charged with pretty much everything. The trolls and the chariot into my necropolis guard. He was hoping to be able to snipe out my wizards with the trolls. And the boar riders, the cave goblins, the gargantula, and the wyvern into the uh, shapti. So here we can see some of the chargers declared. And he made all of them. So this is the necropolis guard and the shapti. Oh, <laughs> and the goblin king into the shapti as well. Into the rear there. So they were properly surrounded. Uh, the mad gets, one of them decided to go straight through the combat. Um, he rolled five hits and had to distribute them evenly. And uh, they didn't do any damage to me, but they did a wound to the Gorgantula, to the Wyvern, to the Goblins, and the Boar Riders. Uh, so <laughs> that was a good mad get for me. Uh, but he annihilated the unit. Um, no problem at all. Uh, so there's that. And reformed uh, a bit. Um, the other combat, though, uh, we can see here clo uh, with closer. I, I won against the trolls. He didn't do. I think he did one wound to my hierophant. That's it. Maybe kill a dude or something. But then I, I, I did enough damage to break both the chariot and the trolls. Um, I didn't chase anything down, though. I reformed. Maybe I should have. No, probably not. Um, and he he reformed after this combat, and unfortunately for him he was not, it was, this was the end of his turn 2, he was not able to make any of the units uh, come within 6 inches of the objective marker. Um, so just that. He overran with the wyvern I think to make some headway with it. Um, and then it's my turn, and I uh, charge like this. Uh, we can go back and have a look. Uh, the chariot sh shot charged the chariot, fled, and then I redirected into the git launcher and made it. And the necropolis guard charged the boar riders, um, like so. And I cast perception of strength and ancestral aid on them, so they were pumped up and ready to go. Uh, and of course, they just killed the boar riders and then overran into the cave goblins. Unfortunately, I would have. Liked it if they had overrun into the wyvern, but that was not, that was not possible. So into the cave goblin it was. Um, in his turn, he decided not to counter charge. Instead, he moved around with the spider and the wyvern and the goblin king. He made get aiming to get another um, sandwich of another of my unit. Um, the chariots uh, managed to kill both the sh uh, the chariot and the gift launcher, and they continued to harass the backside of the board. I think they killed one more gate launcher by the end of the game, but we'll, we'll, we'll focus on the center here. Uh, it's not that important what happened up up top. I did try a charge, double six charge, uh, after he fled with the goblins. They tried double six charge into the rear of the wyvern, but failed that. So, whatever. Um, in his... Uh, in my turn, the combat, nothing really happened. He reformed to face me. Uh, and then in his turn, he. Um, oh, yeah. I also. There's something missing here. Um, hmm. It's odd. I. I, uh, I charged um, his spider with my archers in my turn. Um, I wonder why there's no picture of that. That's really weird. Uh, but I charged the, the spider, uh, hoping to just tie it up for a single turn. But uh, no such luck. He uh, annihilated the unit in a single turn, and, and so I, I was hoping to pre prevent him from charging uh, to sandwich me completely. Uh, but uh, the spider was just too killy. I think that's. You know, I have 17 wounds, and he has uh, 8 attacks plus stomp. So. Uh, and, and he hits on. 3 up wounds on 3 up with the spider. Uh, so uh, it's not a guarantee that he kills me um, completely, but uh, he got a lo lucky d6 stomp, so uh, he came down to, down to that. And the amount of poisons he gets through is very, very important, so hard to predict that one. Um, 
So he has killed killed them. Um, yeah, wait. This he uh, the cave goblins reformed in his turn, and then we fought in my turn again, and then uh, and I killed a bunch of cave goblins in my turn, and then it was his turn to charge, and he did did so like that. And by now I had cast. Uh, Ancestral Aid and Spectral Blades on the unit, so I had both of those up. And the combat looked dangerous for sure, but um, this is after the first first round. Um, noticeable here is that the, another fanatic went through the combat and did another wound on the Wyvern, and uh, my four guys who got a strike got a strike at him managed to kill it. Uh, real hit and wound with poison and little strike helps. Um, so that was really good, and he, he was very unlucky with his role, so like the whole wyvern killed like, and the orc killed like two models, something like that, and the spider didn't, didn't do much either. An important thing is here that he failed with nets, a roll of one uh, for that, so he, I, I was full strength, um, which was quite important. And the cave goblins broke, ran, I couldn't pursue of course. And we went went into grind mode uh, with the spider, and then I've got to take a bunch of pictures. Um, so let's just talk about it a li little bit. Um, he kept grinding and grinding and grinding. I didn't dare to move my pharaoh into contact with the spider because of the the fang uh, that could d do d3 plus one wounds to him. Um, but I I didn't do much damage to the spider, so. Uh, he was down to four wounds, and I had I had like two guys left, something like that. Um, when I finally made way with the Pharaoh, and uh, in that round of combat, he did hit on a, uh, with, with a poison on the Fang, so six up. Uh, he needed to hit uh, to hit me. He needed to roll a maybe five up even, uh, but at least four up, and then wound on. 5 up, uh, but poison goes through that, and all I got was, got was my 4 up AD save, and I passed. Then I had 5 attacks back at the spider, uh, hit on 4 up because I had break the spirit on me, um, and wound on 2 up, um, and I managed to kill it. I think I had spectral blades that turn, so I riddled to wound, but not to hit. Uh, but I got really lucky, I managed to kill it, and then that saved my unit, so... Um, in the end, I, I won that combat. I killed the wolf as well, uh, eventually. And uh, since I had blocked him from the scenario, I kept um, kept bringing those points in and, and got the second obje their objective as well. So this is how it looked at, like at the end of the end of the game. Uh, he didn't have that much left, but I had lost a fair amount. I guess the archers and the half the unit of uh, necropolis guard and the um, and the shop this. Um, but I was really, really lucky here, uh, surviving with the with the Pharaoh and surviving with the unit and all of that. I had good f uh, 42 rolls throughout the game, and those four up rolls, the decisive moment, they, they are what saved me. And it gave me a win. Uh, so I got 2,987 points, he got uh, 1,547. So 1440 diff and scenario in my ad advantage, so 173, which brings my total up to 46 battle points, which is good. I always aim to average 10, um, so if I can just manage 4 points in the last game, I will succeed at that. So game 5 then, against the Empire of Sonstal, uh, commanded by Nikolai. Uh, with the lovely giant wielding a, a giant repeater in the middle there. Uh, really love that model. Uh, this is his list. Uh, now it's not bl blurry anymore even. Uh, you can pause it if you want to have a look. Uh, we are playing Frontline Clash and Breakthrough. Um, I deployed first to go first. Um, and I deployed fairly compact, like so. Uh, this is how he deployed. This is my right flank with a lot of cavalry. And this is his main army cornering 
uh, with a steam tank, two wizards on, on Arcane Engine, uh, one of each kind, and I think Divination and Cosmology. Uh, but they are both adepts, so they can take uh, any uh, number one spells uh, they like, so yeah, they do whatever they want, pretty much. Uh, they have infantry with the BSB, a marshal and griffin, who's the general, the giant, as I mentioned, have infantry, a uh, small unit, uh, and the imperial guard out on the flank. Um, I advanced. Um, a bit hes hesitantly with chariots. The chariots were in a <clears throat> really tough spot in this game. Um, I it's, it's something I struggle with in many games really that I can't um, out deploy anything because they really didn't want to face that uh, steam tank. The ne necropolis guard and the shaptis can handle the steam tank, but the chariots cannot. Um, so. I didn't really know what to do with the chariots because uh, he had deployed the steam tank there, as he should. Um, so a bit of an issue there. Um, he advanced on my right flank, uh, starting to encircle me. Uh, the big unit of knights, um, sort of teasing the shafti a bit, and uh, then he opened fire on, I think the chariots primarily, with a giant and some uh, magic missiles. Uh, in my turn, uh, I forgot to take, take some pictures. I, I moved up the um, the hill with um, with my necropolis guard, and I tried to cause the truth of time on them. Now I want to winch a bit about my dice because I rolled a triple two, um, and so it failed. Because even though I met the number, it was a miscast and goes down to triple one, which is a fail. And since there's no actual ones here, I didn't get the dice back, so just three dice lost. Uh, so that was rough. Um, and I uh, needed to roll a four on the dice, so like any other result would have been... Uh, or, uh, any other result would have been better. Basically, this is the absolute worst I could have rolled. Um, so. That was rough. In the end, it didn't matter much, though. But we'll get to that. Uh, the Shaptis in my tr second turn they advanced heavily, uh, going straight for the knights, uh, figuring I I'm winning this combat, no problem. Uh, he can do whatever he wants. I I'm gonna kill them. Um, it does lure my Shaptis away from the army, but I, mean, I couldn't let the knights just ride around on their own. Um, I think that would have been too dangerous. So they go out, go out of the way, way to handle those. Um, he advances on me, uh, since uh, I'm on a hill, I can charge pretty much what I want, so he just pushes his heavy infantry into my face, and a small unit, and the, um, the Imperial Guard starts to move around my Necropolis gar Guard. Steam Tank tried to make it into the chariots, but failed, stopped short, and the other heavy infantry unit marched into water feature but only two round uh, and on the flank we continue dance around a little bit and then <laughs> the interesting thing happened so my turn starts like this and the chariots cannot charge past the uh, steam tank unfortunately that would have been lovely to charge them into the unit but he moved just enough to block that, block that. so instead I decided to charge with the uh, architect on, on the chariot and my pharaoh into the heavy infantry water feature. And I needed to roll a 7, I think, on the pharaoh, maybe an 8, so it wasn't at all a guaranteed. Um, if I had gotten my truth of time, it would have been pretty safe, um, but uh, as it is, it wasn't. But I did make it, both made it in, though the pharaoh did stumble and uh, somehow take a, took a wound from the water, uh, so that was a bit unfortunate. Um, my thinking here with doing this is that he is not steadfast in the water feature, so if I can win this combat by a decent amount, I have a good chance of breaking him. Um, so that was what I was thinking. Uh, magic, I cast... Uh, I tried to cast Truth of Time on, on the Pharaoh, uh, boosted to heal the wound, but I, f I think he dispelled that. Um, truth, of, truth of Time would have let me 
make it into his general and kill him with the pharaoh the turn after if I break the unit. Um, and then I think I cast Ancestral Aid on the Necropolis card to uh, safeguard against the uh, uh, Imperial, Imperial Guard, but that was a mistake. I should have cast it on the Pharaoh instead. Really, really stupid of me. Because, uh, yeah, I'd also cast, cast uh, Ice and Fire and kill this unit, so that was nice. But then on to this combat, uh, and you can see here, I only killed three models. And I... Uh, Made did some math on this afterwards, and I th should kill five on average. Uh, the problem is that it's distracting, so. Um, but I only killed three models. Um, had I had a re-roll re on the Pharaoh, he was hitting on four up, but with a re-roll, that would be a, a lot safer. I think I hit twice with him. And the, I, I, th I think he, I hit twice with him and did two wounds, and then one wound on impact hits. But on, on average, the impact hits should do two, the Pharaoh should do two, and the uh, Architect and the Horses combined should do one, so I should do five on average. But with a reroll, that would have been much safer. Although, in hindsight, even winning by. Even if I did do five wounds, I only win by. No, the Pharaoh should do more than that. Oh. Um, I, I should win. I sh should do five or six wounds, I think. Uh, I did c uh, calculate this yes, short, shortly before the show, uh, recording this, but I uh, have already forgotten. But I, th I think I should win by four, um, uh, if averages, and, and then he st sticks on a five with a reroll. So even, even a average case, it wasn't that likely that I that I gonna. It, it wasn't get guaranteed to break him. Um, but had I cast as I played, I would have had a better chance. But as it was, uh, I won by like one or two. He's uh, if, if, even that, and he stuck uh, stuck around. Um, so I was in trouble. In his turn, he charged charged the scouts, killing them uh, with the knights great weapons. Uh, and the steam tank lumbered into the flank of my chariot. Uh, he kept moving around the uh, um, Necropolis Guard. I should mention by now the, the knights have fled off the table from the Shatis, but they are a bit stranded out there. Um, but they kept moving around my flank, threatening my bunker, um, and my, my uh, Necropolis Guard don't really know what they're doing. Um, and the combat here, I challenged with the um, Shariot, and he accepted with the BSB, uh, surprisingly, which meant that I sort of had a chance. Um, because he... I mean, he, he couldn't do much damage to uh, the Shariton, um, only the BSB. But he still managed to sneak a few wounds through in the combat, I think. Uh, yeah, I think he did two wounds to the Shariton in the, in the duel, and my Pharaoh again fluffed his attacks. Uh, I killed two more. Um, I guess that's not a fluff, but he, he, he should do two and a half on average, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and then I crumbled, both dead. Uh, I think it was a bit close, had I been, been able to recover that hell point I might have been able to stick around, but yeah, it wasn't great. Um, did two wounds to Pharaoh as well with, with the normal guys, and he did buff, buff them a lot, so... My, my general was bad, and uh, so was one of the architects. Not good. Um, and he was now closing in, it was my turn again, so in, he was closing in on the bunker, so I abandoned it and joined the, the corporate guard unit. Uh, unfortunately, it meant I couldn't charge with them, so they were still just sticking around, doing nothing, wasting all of their points. Uh, and he kept <laughs> moving up around me, uh, encircling me. Um, the steam tank moved to to be in the way. Uh, the uh, heavy, infant he heavy infantry in the lake marched out of it, and again uh, they were very good swimmers, so took very little damage. Uh, and he killed my bunker, uh, or it wasn't a bunker anymore, the archers, with the general and the knights and the uh, guard, no problem at all, and moved to face the Shapti with the guard. Um, I think this is just a different angle, yeah. 
I charged his small unit of heavy infantry with Necropolis Guard and the Shapti, but they are steadfast because of the nearby unit. Um, it was close though, really close, because if I had killed one more guy from his unit with my uh, Pharaoh, he, I, I would have broken that steadfast too. But as it were, I did not, and he was able to counter charge um, very effectively. Because if, if I had managed to break that unit, uh, I would have charged... Um, the, the, the Shaptis would have, yes, maybe reformed, I think, and then the Corpus Guard would have charged into the uh, big unit uh, to, in a much better position than they end, ended up in. But instead he countercharged me, and it turned into a grind fest. Um, and with that constant distracting, I had so much trouble hitting because now I didn't have my Pharaoh, so I was only offensive skill 3, so I was hitting on 5s. Um, so yeah, it was it was bad. Uh, and the Chariots, let's see, yeah, I charged, uh, in this turn when I charged here, I also charged the Chariots into the, into the steam tank, hoping for a mir miracle. <laughs> it didn't happen. And the giant count countercharged, uh, and then and they grinded out the Chariots pretty fast. Uh, so back to the, this combat, we kept grinding and grinding and grinding, um, the Resilience 5 helps a lot and the 5 of Fortitude, but he had the upper hand, um, eventually killed my wizards um, with the small heavy infantry unit, uh, so my, I lost my magic support and eventually started to crumble as well. Um, and that, then it was just downhill, he kept... Uh, crumbling them. Uh, I did manage to kill the small unit at least. Uh, I think, yeah, here's the one guy left in the last combat only fought, and I I did kill that it, that turn, uh, and then that was the end of the game. He uh, the the Shaptis were actually in his deployment zone, uh, and he had hadn't really thought about the, the second secondary objective that much, but um, towards the end, the, in the last turn, he realized it. And, uh, can we go back? Uh, the knights here, we turned them around and was just enough to march them in, uh, or uh, advance them into the deployment zone, so he did get to the secondary objective. Otherwise he only had the um, the Imperial Guard unit in in there, uh, so I would have tied it otherwise, but he, he did get it. So uh, I lost almost everything, thinking what, what did I not lose? Yeah, the Shaptis. That makes sense. Um, and I only got 873 points. He got uh, almost 3,500. So a diff of 3,017. And he did got to objective. So I managed to scrape together a single point in this game. Which was annoying. I needed three points. No, four points. But I only got, got one. So I ended up on 47 battle points. Which, I mean, to be fair... Um, this game especially, it was a, an uphill battle, and the first game was an uphill battle. I did get, did get three victories overall, um, so that was nice. But uh, considering it's the first time I play, played this army uh, at a tournament, and only my, only my third to seventh game with this army, uh, I'm pretty happy. So, that's the, that's the end of the tournament. Uh, I want to thank my five great opponents, Fraz, Felix, Pete, uh, Sophus and Nikolai. It was really, really great coming here uh, to Denmark and play some games. Uh, my thanks again to Henry for hosting the event and to Mick TikTok for convincing me to go there, go here. It's uh, it was a great time, and I really hope to be going in someday. Uh, also, thank you to the audience for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.